Hi, this is Jenny Baldwin, the math instructional coach for elementary school, and today I'm going to talk about the Math Plus Red, which is the fourth grade curriculum, and we're going to go over Unit 2, which covers whole number operations. This is a very important unit, and it is a very long unit. There are 24 lessons in all, and it starts off by reviewing estimation skills, then we add, subtract, multiply, divide, then we talk about prime numbers, composite numbers, factors, and um, do a little bit of review before we have our unit checkpoint and extended problem solving. Now, remember the last lesson in each unit is the extended problems, and this is a summary of the entire unit and all that has been learned. This lesson, this is very important, in unit two for fourth grade, this lesson is going to be part of the portfolio. Lesson one, or in unit one, the extended problems was something that was done independently with the learning coach. But in lesson, or unit two, this lesson is a portfolio grade. And if you click on this lesson, you will see that the directions vary a little bit um, than they did for the first lesson. I'm gonna click on through, because it looks the same at first, but as you click through, you're going to see that there are materials listed right here instead of having to go to the learning um, coach section or the learn lesson guide and there it, it says extended problems graded assignment a the teachers are also going to k-mail this but we are going to do session a and as you continue to mark go through well, let me go back sorry I'm, I may have skipped right past it it says this is a graded assignment contact your teacher if you're not sure how to submit this assignment but right here this is where the directions are different, right here where the materials. It says, your teacher will grade this assignment. So like I said, this is part of the portfolio grade. Right now, many of the teachers have skipped this for you. So don't worry about unskipping it. Um, you can do that when the teachers send it through a K-mail and they can help you um, know when it is an appropriate time to complete this assignment. So like I said, the extended problems for unit two is different than the other um, lessons. Now, since there's so much to cover, I want to go right to the lesson guide. Now, a lot of folks are still having trouble finding resources in the lesson guide. So remember about this tab over here that opens up the online book menu. We are in the second unit, which is whole number operations. You can click right at each one to go directly to the page that you need to go to that correlates to that specific lesson. Also down here are the additional resources that maybe you can't find and you're like, I don't know where to find these. So you can see there's printable base 10 blocks, there's blank number lines, there's centimeter grid paper, there's um, lots of resources right here. Now what you'll notice in unit one, the extended problem solving was right here as well. But since unit two is different, and it is a portfolio grade, you will not find those answers right here. And this is something to be graded by the teacher. What I want you to do as a learning coach is to not guide your child to answer those questions. The teacher doesn't want to grade the learning coach responses, the teacher wants to grade the student responses. And even though it is the beginning of the year, we're trying to encourage students to learn how to think critically and to explain their thinking and when it gets time for portfolios we'll do some additional sessions to help students be successful um, with completing these assignments of course by the end of the year students are going to do a much better job at explaining their thinking but we do want them to be prepared for the Georgia milestones assessment at the end of the year and learning how to think critically analyze the work and do the very best they can. That's all that we're asking that students do the very best they can independently so that they're not being told what to do um, because the teachers won't know how to help them if we guide them too much and it doesn't do the child a favor in the long run. Um, so again, in the student book, let's head to the student activity book. When it first opens up, of course, you can go straight to the second unit and click on estimate and solve problems. Now I'm going to go quickly through some of these because I definitely want to spend more time on multiplication and division. Estimating kind of refers back to that rounding unit and kids thinking about what is closer and what would make good sense. 
it's important to have those discussions about, you know, if you're in the grocery store and something costs $19.99, about how much does it cost? And of course they're going to say $20. But we can start estimating with larger numbers and really thinking about what is a good estimate and what is a reasonable estimate, estimate and what would make sense. And read the directions carefully because it says choose the best two numbers because we have two things added together so they're going to actually choose two numbers and again if you're confused by the directions and what some of these things say definitely go back to the lesson guide that the learning coach guide um, provides like all the answers so and they are in red or pinkish color so you'll be able to see exactly what is expected so let's continue on through this estimate sums and differences remember sum is the answer when you add difference is the answer when you subtract so um, spend some time on this and really talk to your students about being problem solvers and thinking logically and making good estimates and estimates may vary sometimes and sometimes in the lesson guide you're going to even see that where it says less answers may vary estimates are just that they're an educated guess we of course want to guess close but they're not always going to be the same now after we do addition and subtraction um, before we get into or estimating addition and subtraction before we get into multiplying students will be using the standard algorithm to add and subtract. Now I'm going to go to a website um, right here and I'm going to put a link to this for subtraction and addition in the newsletter. So please check this out. The one thing we want to avoid is for students just to simply follow steps and say, well, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to bring this down, I'm going to cross this out, and I'm going to carry this, and I'm going to borrow from this, because that doesn't teach students actually what is happening in a number. So we want to first represent things with base 10 blocks. Fourth graders do begin to add and subtract with the standard algorithm, but if they do not have a strong foundation in place value and understand exactly what they're doing, they're going to get confused and make mistakes. So let's say we have 352 and I'm going to click enter, but I want to subtract 127. And then I'm going to click enter again. Now with the visuals it's easy to see, well if I'm taking 7 away from 2, I really can't do that because there's not enough there. So we are going to have to borrow a group of 10. Now when we just use the standard algorithm, students say, I'm going to borrow one. Well, we're not just borrowing one, we're borrowing 10. So let's regroup and let's bring those 10 over and we turned it into 10 ones. So now it is easy to take away seven from 12. And you can see the numbers change. Now we have seven from 12. And then we have two from four, and one from three and we do not need to regroup anymore because we can um, handle those because all of these digits are smaller than all of these digits so let's subtract and we can see and it shows the visual when we take seven away we're left with four when we take two away we're left with 20 not just two we're left with 20 when we take 100 away we're left with 200 because we started with 300 minus 200, 100 equals 200. So the answer is 225. Sorry, that's 5 instead of 4. So we definitely want to encourage students to understand what is happening and we want to use the right vocabulary. When we talk about the tens columns, we want to call it 20s. We want to call it 40s. When we talk about the hundreds, we want to talk about that it is 300, not just 3. So use the right vocabulary and again I'll share the links to do this with addition as well so that students know when it is time to regroup and what that actually really means. So let's head back to the um, student lesson activity guide and let's talk about multiplication. Third graders learn multiplication facts or begin to learn multiplication facts and fourth graders begin to extend on that. This time they also learn to really think about what it means. So right here, instead of just saying 5 times 7, it says 35 is 5 times as many as 7. And a lot of students look at that and they're like, what does that mean? So it's important to practice those, um, the vocabulary and really thinking about and modeling. You could use things around your house and say 28 is or equals, and the equal signs 
a lot of students think, oh, you're going to spit out the answer on the other side, but it's important for them to think about equals is the same as. 28 is the same as four times as many as seven, or four times seven. So they could create four groups of seven, and they will see that it equals 28. So definitely use models. Students can look at this and get the right answer, but they may not understand what they're doing. So use those models. Use blocks. Use Legos. Use spoons in your kitchen. Anything that helps them understand what is actually happening with the math. Because as they begin becoming familiar with the terminology, they're going to start multiplying larger numbers. Now, fourth graders do not need to learn how to multiply or divide with the standard algorithm. Standard algorithm means the standard procedures. That's how we learned how to multiply and divide when we were younger. That is not necessarily what's appropriate now. We want students to make sense of the math. We want students to understand that multiplication, division, addition, subtraction is based on the value of the digits. Now, I am going to take this example, 225 times 5, and I'm going to show you with my webcam what I'm talking about. So, we have, and I'm going to see if I can make this a little bit bigger for you, we have 225 times 5. So, Again, what we want students to think about is not just, okay, let's line this up, let's follow these procedures. We want students to think about the value of each digit because 225 is technically 200 plus 20 plus 5. The 2 is not just a 2. The 2 is 200. This 2 is 20, and this 2 is 5. So when we multiply 225 times 2, we're not just multiplying 5 times 2. We're multiplying 5 times 200. So that's what we want to do. We want to say 200 times 5 plus 20 times 5 plus 5 times 5. So when we multiply 5 times 200, we want to make 200 5 times bigger. So we have we could skip count. We could say 200, 400, 600, 800, 1,000. 200, 400, 600, 800, 1,000. Five times. So that would be 1,000. Or you could also use your knowledge of multiplying by tens and hundreds. We know 5 times 2 is 10, but we're making it 100 times bigger. So we have 10 hundreds. Here we have 20 times 5. So I could skip count by 5 20 times, but that would take quite a while. So what I need to think about is I'm going to multiply 10 or 5 times 2 and get 10, but I made it 10 times bigger. So I have 10 tens, 100. And then I'm going to know, I know that 5 times 5 is 25. Now when I add these together, I have 1,000 plus 100 plus 25 is 1,000. 125. So my product is 1,125. So this is the strategy or one of the strategies that students should use when they're in fourth grade. Not just lining up the digits like this and following a procedure. We want kids to think about the value of the digits and multiplying and making things 100 times bigger, 10 times bigger, etc. So let's head back to the OLS and let's see what else we have in store for us. So after students learn the partial products, they also begin to learn how to divide or multiply with two digit numbers. So two digit numbers can work the same way. Again, this is not by following the standard algorithm. Even though it's written like this, that is not what is intended for students to do. So I'm going to write 95 times 32 on my paper and let's head over to the webcam and let's take a peek at how this should be worked out. So we have 95 times 32. Again, we don't want kids to just say 5 times 2, 9 times 2, etc, etc. Because this is, again, that's not a 9, that's a 90. We want kids to think about the value of the digits. 
I prefer for students to write it out like this side by side so they really think about the values the 90 is a 90 or the 95 is a 90 plus 5 and the 32 is a 30 plus 2 when they really think about the values of the digits they begin to understand what they're actually doing now we want the 90 32 times bigger and the 5 32 times bigger but since we've broken apart, we can say we want the 90 30 times bigger and the 92 times bigger, the 5 30 times bigger, and the 5 2 times bigger. So because we want to have 95 32 times. So let's look at our numbers here. So let's start with 90. I'm going to have 90 and I'm going to multiply it by 30. 90 times 30. And let's get our partial product. That means part of the answer. And we'll continue to do this until we get all of the answers. I know that 9 times 7 is, or 9 times 3 is 27. But I'm multiplying also tens by tens. When we multiply 10 by 10, we get 100. So I am multiplying 90 by 30. So I have 27 hundreds, not just 27, because I, and, we don't necessarily want to teach the trick, okay, there's two zeros here, so we have two zeros here. We really want students to understand we have 10 times 10, or 100, so 27 hundreds. Now let's multiply 90 times 2. So we have 90 times 2. I know that 9 times 2 is 18, and I want to make it 10 times bigger, so we have 18 tens. So I'm going to add those together, but now let's move to the fives. I have 5 times 30, so let's do 30 times 5. Again, I know 3 times 5 is 15, but we're doing 10s. We want it 10 times bigger. I have 15 10s, so I'm going to add that as part of my product. And then we have 5 times 2, and 5 times 2 is 10. So here are my partial products. So let's add all of these together to get the final product. I have 0, 0, 0, 0, and then I have 8 plus 5 is 13, plus one more is 14, 8, 9, 10, and then I have 3. Now again, right here we're using the standard algorithm of addition. So make sure your child understands that when you carry a one, like we did, we're actually, it's a group of 100 because we had 10, 10, this would be 14, and we carried it over because it's a whole group of 100. So use that terminology with your child. We're not just carrying a one, we carried 100. Here we had 1,000 that we brought over. So that, because we wanted it to be in the thousands, because otherwise we would have had 10 hundreds, and that doesn't make sense to have 10 hundreds. So we wanted to bring it over to make a thousand. So even though we didn't follow the standard algorithm, we got the right answer by thinking about place value. So make sure that when you're teaching multiplication, you're not just doing teaching things the way that you were taught it, but you're teaching it so that students understand place value and how to apply place value. When students get to fifth grade, they will apply the standard algorithm, but for now in fourth grade, we don't want to go um, to that go that route. We want students to really use place value. Again, here um, we're going to talk about multiplication, but this is the area model of multiplication. So it starts out pretty simple, but then it gets into more complicated things with larger numbers. It shows things like 2 times 18, and this will remind you of the air arrays in third grade when you begin to talk about modeling multiplication with the rays. We have two groups with 18 in each group. So basically, that is what this is talking about. But if you think about it, you could break this 18 into 10 and 8. So we have two groups of 10 here, so 2 times 10 would be 20 and 2 times 8 would be 16. 20 plus 16 would be 36. So students may not necessarily know their multiplication facts, but when they decompose the numbers, or the larger multiplication facts like 2 times 18, they if they decompose it, they know that 2 times 10 is 20, and they know that 2 times 8 is 16, so they basically just add those two components together. So they know more facts than they actually 
think they know. So we'll continue to talk about um, the area model and as you can see here it goes and shows doesn't show every single block but you have to understand that okay we have 114 times 5 so I need to break or this number apart or decompose 114 to show 100 and 10 and 4 so we have 100 10 and 4 all multiplied by 5 we'll continue with the area model and get even more complicated numbers now if your student starts to count every single box individually you know that they're not thinking about how to decompose this number appropriately now these models basically show you want 17 times 14 so whichever model shows 17 times 14 but I'm going to show you some additional problems like this this one says 15 times 24 now let me turn on my document camera because I want to show you even though they have all the squares right here counted out we have 10 here and 5 here and 20 here and 4 here I want to show you on a piece of paper how you could work this out without having to print out this model so let me write that down and I'm going to turn on my document camera to show you how this can be solved without any printing so let's make it full screen so here is 15 times 24 now again we want students to really think about what the value of each digit is so I am going to draw a rectangle just one big rectangle and I know that 15 is made up of 10 and 5 so I'm going to draw the 10 section a little bit bigger than the 5 section because 10 is bigger than 5 and then I know that 24 is made up of 20 plus 4 24 and I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to make the 20 bigger now I'm going to do that same theory of doing partial products I'm going to do part of the answer at a time and then I can add them all together to get the final product we have 20 10 times now I could count by 20 10 times I could do 20 40 60 80 100 120 140 160 180 200 um, I could do that or I could say 2 times 1 is 2 and we want to make it 100 times bigger because 10 times 10 is 100 so I have 200 25 times I know that if I have 25 times I have 100 2 times 5 is 10 and I made it 10 times bigger so I have 10 tens or I could count by 25 times 20 40 60 80 100 now I have 10 times 4 is 40 and 4 times 5 is 20 these are my partial products now let's add them together when I add them together I have a 0 a 6 and a 3 so students will know that 15 times 24 equals 360 they did not solve this by just lining numbers up and um, following a procedure they answered it by understanding place value so let's head back to the OLS and let's see what else is in store so remember you don't have to print it out you don't have to see every square we want students to decompose the numbers into their place values and think about the math so let's head on over because soon you're also going to apply these same things to four digit numbers but the same applies you're going to apply these same things to two digit numbers by two digit numbers but again do not necessarily follow the standard algorithm use the partial product method and after we talk about multiplication we're going to talk about division now the standard algorithm for division or the long division algorithm where we divide one number into another um, using the little house is not a skill that has to be mastered until sixth grade what your child will likely see on the Georgia milestone is problems similar to this so that we know that they understand division it says use color tiles to solve again you know you want to start out with using models if I have 48 and I divide it by 6 how many groups am I going to have so use blocks in your house use um, pieces of cereal anything count out 48 divide it into six groups 
Is it going to be divided equally? Is there going to be any left over? So make sure they understand what division actually means and they understand, let them understand that it is related to multiplication. Division is the opposite of multiplication. So if they could use the facts, we can say if 84 is divided by 4 to get C, C times 4 equals 84. So again, we definitely want to use models. Now I am including the link to these printable base 10 models that you can cut apart. We have our hundreds, tens, and ones, so you can cut them apart if you don't want to use objects in the house um, to go through the lessons, but it is important to model the math. So here we have 84, so we have 8 groups of 10 and 4 to make 84 and we divide it into four different groups. So you can see as the lesson progresses how they take and they just keep dividing and sharing and it's just as if you're passing things out to um, a group of children at a party you want everybody to have the same amount so you um, take turns and you continue passing out till everything is passed out and you can see every group got 21 blocks. Now of course Numbers are going to get a little larger, and we are going to be introduced to things that happen when there are remainders. So work with your child, and remember, it's okay to use models, but we also want them to um, think about, let's do this one right here. It says, Julianne has 75 marbles to share with five people. She wants to give each person the same number of marbles. How many marbles will each person get? So let me turn my webcam on again and make it a little bigger. So she had 75 divided by five friends. And your student may say, well, I don't know exactly what 75 divided by five actually is. So I encourage them to think about this number 75. And let's do, we can use stick models like this. We can use, um, or actually, I'm gonna make it even simpler than that. Let's just do this, let's do 70. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. And then let's do five. One, two, three, four, five. So I have 75, but I want to divide 75 by my five friends. So we can do this one here. I'm gonna mark off that one. This one here, this one here, this one here, and this one here. Here. This is a great way for students to use their scratched paper during testing and to use their journals um, when they're doing their math so that they can really think about it. Students cannot necessarily work all of these out on their head. They need to be using paper. They need to be drawing models and explaining their thinking. So now we have 25 left over. So I need to break these apart so I can divide them up. Here's 10 and here's 10. So let me take this 10 and I'm going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I'm going to do another 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So when I do that, I start to see a pattern. Now I could easily say this one here and this one here and this one here. But what I've noticed as I did this, this entire group could go here. And that would be one, two, three, four, five. So one, two, three, four, five. The same pattern would continue. And students begin to do things like this and they begin to make sense of their math, especially when you, your models are drawn out and they can see a pattern. So it looks like 15 would be in every single group. So 75 divided by five equals 15. So let's head back to our lessons because the numbers are going to get even bigger. But again, we don't want students to necessarily think about the long division algorithm. We want to think for them to think about other things. So I'm going to talk to you about that. We also want kids to think about the definitions of columns and rows. Remember columns? Think about a house and what holds your front porch up. It's a column that stands tall. So when it says three columns, the columns are standing tall. So this one has three columns. Now, even though the OLS starts to talk about the standard algorithm for division, do not feel that that is what you need to do. Again, there's also going to be to talk about remainders. That is an important thing. So sometimes there's going to be something left over, and that's the remainder of the problem. So there's 
like in the last problem, you know, 15 fit in each one, but what if the number had just been one more? Um, we would have a remainder or something left over. Now here is what I want to talk to you about. It says divide greater numbers and it says standard algorithm. Standard algorithm is okay, but that's not the goal for fourth grade. So we would rather you think about multiplication and how to apply multiplication to division when you teach your child how to divide. And I'm going to share with you lots of resources and videos so that even though we learned how to divide by the standard algorithm, we want students to learn to divide just like they're doing right here in these examples by using multiplication. And so technically right here, they're not using the standard algorithm, they're using what they know about place value and multiplication and doing partial products until they get to the final answer. So I'm going to head on through this and show you an example here. Let's do 2 or 726 divided by 2 and I'll talk to you a little bit and show you with my um, document camera how to teach this concept without um, just having kids follow procedures. We also want to reiterate, we're not dividing 2 into 7. This is 700. This is 20 and this is 6. So 726. So we need to think about the whole number, not just the 7. Traditionally, a lot of students said 2 goes into 7 three times. But like I said, that's a misconception because that is not a 7. That's a 700. So we need to think about this entire number. And we can think about, okay, I know that 2 times 3 is 6, and I know that 2 times 4 is 8. And if I wanted it to be hundreds, we could say um, 2 times 3 is 600, or 2 times 300 is 600, 2 times 400 is 800. So I know that 726 is between 600 and 800. So what I'm going to do, because I can't go over, I'm going to multiply 2 times 300. And when I do that, I'm going to get 600. 2 times 300 is 600. So right now I did 300 so far. So let's make the number a little bit smaller because I've already taken out 300 groups of 2. So let's subtract I can take 0 away from 6. Now I'm going to have to regroup though and borrow 10 groups of 10 here from this hundreds to make a 12 tens and or actually sorry about that I wasn't reading carefully. Let's try that again. So we have 2 into 726. I know that 2 times 300 is 600. So when I subtract, I get 126. So I know that there's still something left over. So, so far I've taken away 300 groups of 2. So let's think about, I know that 2 times 5 is 10. I know that 2 times 6 is 12, but let's keep it simple. Let's just do 5. So let's do, or 50, let's do 2 times 50 because we're doing hundreds here. And 2 times 50 would be 100 because I have 50 two times. So let's take away 100 and we'll get 26 left over. Now how many times will 2 go into 26? Well let's think, well I know that 2 times 10, let's take away 20. It's 2 times 10 is 20, so let's take away 10 groups and I'm left over with 6. And how many times can 6 be divided by 2? Well, 2 times 3 is 6, so I'll take away another 3 groups, and now I have nothing left over. Now, again, we did part at a time without really going through the standard algorithm. We did, okay, we, did, we took away 300 groups, then 50 groups, then 10 groups, and then 3 groups. So I just need to add this up. We have 0, 0, 0 plus 3. So we'll add all these together, 0, 5, and 1. So 5 and 1 is 6, and 3 hundreds. So the answer is 363. And you wouldn't have necessarily known that that was the answer at first, 
but when you think about the place value of every digit and you take it step by step by step no matter how many steps you take you will end up with the right answer so you could have done I know that 2 times 100 or 2 is 100 and you could have taken away 100 at a time but we know that 2 times 300 is 600 so we did a bigger chunk but it can be worked out in multiple ways so let's go back to the OLS and again there's going to be more examples of how to divide when you see a problem like this don't feel like you have to use the standard algorithm take it one chunk at a time until you build up to the answer and use parts or partial products um, after students divide you will get into lessons on prime numbers and composite and here we have one with a remainder and again you know students will be expected to understand what a remainder means but they're not going to have to find it in this way but as we did with the other example if there's a zero then there's no remainders if there's one left over then we want to say remainder of one again sixth grade is when students actually have to master division with the standard algorithm so don't force it too early we want students to understand the math at this age so again after there's lots of practice on dividing but make sure you practice effectively in the right way now the OLS also covers prime factors this is also a skill that is um, more of an enrichment type skill but students do need to understand the difference between factors and multiples so I am going to turn on my webcam again I'm going to take the number 42 as I did with the factor tree and I am going to think of the factors of 42 or the factors are the multiplication facts and I like building factor rainbows um, one is always a factor of every number because you can multiply 1 times 42 and get the answer so 1 times the number itself is always factors so the number and itself are always factors now I know this number is even so I know that 2 can be um, multiplied by something to get 42 so I know that 2 times 24 is 42 and so then I think about okay well 3 can 3 be divided into 42 and so that's where you might need to actually use some of those division skills and say okay so here is 3 into 42 I know 3 times 10 is 30 so let's take away that then I have 12 left over and I know 3 times 4 is 12 so yes it is a factor because nothing's left over so when I have nothing left over so 14 so 3 times 14 and then I'm thinking okay will 4 go into 42 and just because I know my multiplication facts I know that 4 is not something that 42 goes can be divided evenly because I know 4 times 11 is 44 so and I know 5 won't go into 42 evenly but I do know that 6 times 7 is 42 and then I'm right here in the middle there's nothing left in between so here's my factor rainbow I have 1 times 42 2 and 24 3 and 14 and 6 and 7 so there is my factor rainbow these are my factors of 42 um, prime factors now let's go back to the OLS that is a different thing prime factors means that you're going to break a number apart so that you break it into factors and it gives you a head start so we have 42 and it says 6 times what equals 42 well we know 6 times 7 is 42 7 can't be broken apart any further further except to say 1 times 7 so it is prime it can't go any further there's no other numbers that can make 7 besides 1 and itself and that's what the definition of prime means prime numbers are when you take it as low as it goes and it can only be broken up by one in itself composite numbers on the other hand though are numbers that have other factors like six can be broken up to two and three and then when you get to two and three it's as far as you can go because two times itself is two 
3 times itself is 3, and then 7 times itself is 7. So prime means that it is broken up as low as it can go and can, is only 1 times itself. Composite means that it is composed of other factors and it can be broken up further. So basically you're taking numbers and you're breaking it up into its prime factors that can't be broken up any further. What's important to learn though in fourth grade and what you're going to see in Study Island is what a factor means. Factors are the multiplication facts and multiples are when you take a number like 2 and you multiply it times 1 times 2. So we have 2, 4, 6, 8. It's kind of skip counting. So you could take the number 8 and the multiples of 8 would be 8, 16, 24, 32 because you're skip counting by 8s. Now here again is the end of the unit and you they want to make sure that you made sense of the problems, you already explained what you did, use drawings and diagrams to work out your math. Make sure that math is making sense and that you're thinking clearly and always check and try out new ways to make sure your answer is reasonable. And so um, the next step is going to be on multi-step problems and using some of the things that you learned and multiplying and dividing and doing multi-step problems. So definitely take this one step at a time and work them out and really follow directions. Again, use models to explain the math and um, after this unit, then you're going to get into some other operations. So again, this unit is very extensive, has lots of deep, deep topics. We do have Learn Zillion videos that can help you be successful with these lessons. Um, for example, one code that I'm going to provide for you is LZ1878. So you type in the codes that are in the newsletter. You simply click Enter. And what's going to open up is a series of lessons and it says use place value understanding to multiply three and four digit numbers. So all of the things that I've talked about you can see here's the arrays, area models, partial product models. I'll also give you some videos for addition, subtraction, and division. Make sure you spend time and watch those videos. Also make sure you check out the fourth grade webpage a lot of things that will help you with things such as factors, multiples, prime, composite, and the divisibility rules are really key in helping. They're, they're um, a great thing to learn so you understand why numbers, can, some can be divided a certain way and some cannot. These are the standards that your child will be tested on in fourth grade, so make sure that they have mastered those. Again, not everything may be covered fully in the OLS, but by watching all of these videos and by attending Class Connects, all of these standards will be covered and they will be covered in Study Island as well. If your child has not mastered their um, multiplication facts, simply go here and um, click on some of the lessons that will help your child review multiplication and division. And again, there's lots of videos, lots of resources here um, to help you master multiplication and division without using the standard algorithm. So take advantage of the resources we have and don't forget that the online manipulatives and resources are a great tool for you to use as you help your child learn how to use place value strategies to compute with their numbers. Lastly, don't forget that this extended problems is a portfolio assignment. So wait for your teacher to give you instructions to complete that assignment. And I cannot wait to see how you and your child um, conquer this unit and explain your thinking and how everything is related to place value. It's not a list of procedures. It's not a list of rules. Math can make sense to students if we teach it in the right way and let them make sense of the math. Instead of us, of us telling them, do this, do this, do this, let them show us how they would divide. Show us how they can multiply larger numbers and then math is actually going to make sense. Thank you for joining me and I can't wait to um, head up to um, Unit 3 and talk about some other things before we head into Geometry.